Hello, my name is Monica Riccelli. I'll be talking today of WebLogic Server on Docker containers. Docker is a Linux container technology. It offers an easy way to build containers based on recipes, also known as Docker files. You can set boundaries for networking, memory, CPU, and file system for processes. Images for containers can be easily created, shared, and extended. The file system in these images is layered. It's also considered, but not exactly, VM technology. There is an extremely fast adoption of Docker by the Linux community. Opposed to traditional virtual machines, Docker does not require or include a separate operating system, which is what makes it lightweight. Containers rely directly on the functionality of the host kernel on which they run. By using Docker, it is easier to create highly distributed systems by allowing multiple application, worker tasks, and other processes to run autonomously on a single physical machine or across virtual machines. We certified WebLogic Server 12.1.3, JDK versions 7 or 8, on Oracle Linux 6 UL5 with the unbreakable enterprise kernel release 3.813 on Docker versions 1.3.3 and higher. We have certified WebLogic Server 12.1.3, JDK versions 7 or 8, on Oracle Linux 7 with either kernel unbreakable enterprise kernel release 3.813 or the Red Hat compatible kernel 3.10. We also have certified WebLogic Server 12.1.3, JDK version 7 or 8, on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 with a Red Hat Enterprise Linux kernel 3.10. Oracle Linux already has available images on Docker Hub. You can extend these base images with your own JDK and WebLogic Server installation. We have made available in GitHub WebLogic Docker files to create your WebLogic server images. You will need the Oracle Linux 7 image, JDK 7, and WebLogic Server 12.1.3 installation, either the generic installer or the zip installer. Most users will want to build their own WebLogic server Docker image. The first step in doing so is to get the Oracle Linux 6 or 7 or the Red Hat Linux 7 base images from Docker Hub. Download the JDK and download the WLS installer, either generic or zip installer. Edit a sample Docker file posted on GitHub to build the WLS Docker install image by extending the Oracle Linux or Red Hat Linux base image. Edit Docker files posted on GitHub to extend the WLS install image to create a domain configuration, and then edit some supporting scripts posted on GitHub to run containers from the WLS images. We have posted on GitHub Docker files and supporting scripts. We provide two Docker files which extend the Oracle Linux base image. One will run the generic installer and one will run the zip installer. The prerequisite to create a WebLogic server installed image with these Docker files is the Oracle Linux base image, JDK 7, and the WebLogic generic installer or the zip installer. We provide a Docker file that extends the WebLogic install image and then some supporting scripts that aid in the creation of the WLS domain. From the WebLogic server image, you can start two different container configurations. You can run an admin server container, which includes a single admin server running inside of a container and with one WLS machine. Or run a managed server container, which starts a node manager, sets network to connect the managed server container to the admin server container, and calls WST scripts to automatically add the node manager as a machine into the domain and configure a managed server in the machine. Using these containers, you can create a clustered or a non-clustered WLS domain configuration, running on a single host operating system or running on VMs. A WLS Docker topology on a single host would be an admin server container 
and then a group of managed server containers running inside of a cluster, and then a domain. In the same way, you could have several domains running on a single Linux host machine. Another topology is a Docker container with a single WLS server doing messaging with a WLS server running on a remote host and then doing SQL statements on a database. And now we'll run a demo for you to show you how easy it is to create WLS images and then run containers from those images. Then I will run a simple transaction Java client from inside of one of my managed server containers to start a global transaction that includes the two managed servers. The first thing I want to show you is the directory structure that you will find when you download the Docker files and scripts from GitHub. So you'll have Docker files and samples. First, we will create the WebLogic server install image. So for that, you have to go to Docker files. And under here, you'll find one script, build Docker image. The script helps you build the WLS install image. If we go to 12.13, you will see here that I have my JDK and my WebLogic server uh, generic installer and the zip installer, as well as my two Docker files. One Docker file to create a WLS install image with a zip installer, and the generic is WebLogic server install image with a generic installer. Checksum is for the JDK and the installers to make sure they are the correct size. Let me give you a peek into the Docker file. So this is a sample Docker file. Uh, what it does is it first installs the JDK, then it installs WebLogic Server, it runs configure.sh in silent mode to decompress uh, files inside of the zip installer. The default command uh, in the image is bash. If I run the docker images command, I can see that I have my Oracle Linux base images that I have pulled from Docker Hub. Now I will build my WLS install image. I do minus D for developer. Now, if we look at Docker images that we have, we'll see we have the Oracle Linux 7, and then we have the WebLogic server install image, 12.13 slash dev. Now, let's go to your samples. You will see that we have two scripts that are for house cleaning. One removes all containers that are running on your host. Under the 12C domain, we have a Docker file. This Docker file extends the WLS install image, Oracle WebLogic 12.13 dev, and creates an image with a WLS domain configured. Under container scripts, you can find the supporting scripts. So we have some WLSD scripts and uh, some shell commands. The WLSD scripts configure the domain, build our image. Let's call it sample WLS 12.3. The default command when we start the container from this image is start weblogic.sh, which is starting an admin server. So now if we look at our Docker images, 
we see that we have our Oracle Linux 7 based images, and then we have the Oracle WebLogic install image, the WebLogic server domain image. Now we will go ahead and start our containers from this sample WLS domain image. This command indicates that the admin server will start with port 8001, and it will bind that port to the host port 8001. The name of the container is WLS admin, and the image that we are starting our container from is sample WLS 1213, and the command that we want to start is startwithlogic.sh, which starts an admin server. Now we'll get the IP address, and let's start the console. So here's our admin console. Now we'll start two managed server containers. We are linking the container, the managed server container, to the admin server container. So we use the name of the admin server container. We're going to name this container MS1 for managed server 1. The port that this managed server is going to be running on is 7002, and we are binding that to the host port. This container is running from the sample WLS 1213 image, and the, the supporting script that we will run this time is createserver.sh. Uh, we'll start node manager. It will configure a machine on the domain, and then it will configure a managed server on that machine. Now I'll run another one. Let's call this managed server 2 and change the port so that they don't conflict. Ports have to be unique. Okay, so now if we look, if we run the docker ps command, we'll see all our containers that are running. So we have one container, the WLS admin. This one is uh, the admin server container, and then two managed server containers with a port 7002 and 7003. Now I'm going to go into the MS1 container. So the command is docker exec, and you put the container ID and then bash. So this takes us inside the container. So here I have my machines. Start our servers. OK, so they're running now. So now I have to uh, configure my data sources. So there are my two data sources, and now I activate the changes. Invoking my client with the address uh, of both servers. So it will first look the context of the first one. It will get the data source, get a connection, start a global transaction, and then it will do some insert statements uh, on both data sources and then come up the transaction getting connection, doing inserts, and then finally doing the commit. I want to share with you some links that might be helpful. The first four links will help you to get familiar with Docker. There's a link where you can download the Oracle Linux 6 or 7 base image, a link to the Red Hat Linux 7 base image, and then instructions to install Docker Engine on Oracle Linux hosts. I hope this presentation and demo have been useful for you and that you will be encouraged to try WebLogic Server running on Docker. Thank you very much.